much. Thank you so much for attending today and supporting Black Arts District. My name is Kariz Marcel, founder of Black Waterhouse, artist incubator downtown, downtown Baltimore. Uh, we just make a lot of great music in here. Uh, we, we have event space. Uh, yeah, we should be we should be having a full launch in soon. We'll just be kind of throughout the pandemic, just kind of getting this space together. But yeah, I'm a music producer, just all around creator, innovator, involved in technology as well, uh, involved in all kinds of different youth programs. And but this is my latest venture here, which is Black Water House. So my day to day job here is, is here running this house and figuring things out and figuring out how to bring real dope programming to the city that can connect us to the industry. So that's pretty much what I do day to day. Um, well, I think the scene is in a beautiful place. I think we are, I mean, a couple of artists are getting, getting major deals as well. That's always great. Um, I, I think that uh, we, we are very eclectic. We have a lot of different colors, a lot of different styles. We got the grunge, we got the soul, you know, we mix, we just, it's, this is a fusion town, you know, so we got a lot of fusion based hip hop. You know, we have the do it yourself, the D, you know, the DIY crowd. We got the, you know, the, the more the street music. We got, it, it, we got the, all kinds of different fabrics. I think we're in a good place. And we're also starting to work, to work together a lot too, which is dope. So I think we're in a good place in Baltimore, hip hop. I think we're in the most independent space we've been in, in a long time. I'm enjoying it and, and well, you know, we'll see, we'll see where things go. Well, I, you know, in order for me to be even qualified to really truly answer that, I would, I would uh, you know, I would have to be responsible for be be responsible for a career in hip hop to be successful, right? Like for me to be qualified to answer that. But I can definitely, um, I've worked along campaigns of successful rappers um, and I, I get kind of the formulas of things that it takes. And I think that the number one thing it takes is consistency. And that doesn't mean just consistency in doing music or consistency in being perfecting your craft right but that's all very very important but if you want to be a recording artist and be a famous recording artist where the world knows you and you want to feed your family for generations to come from your sonic ideas I think it's very important for you to remain consistent within who you are and sometimes you know that's a self-discovery that's something you got to you gotta go on that journey, you know, you gotta take that walk, as they say. But I think overall, I mean, it's just about not really looking on the outside and how you can look like something that already exists, but like, if you, if you were blind, how would you get dressed, you know? And I think that's kind of the mentality of um, what you gotta kind of be, you know, you gotta fill your way out and, um, and, and, not, and not expect for it to come from an external like savior or looking on the outside of comparing yourself. So being consistent within who you are, I think is the most important like thing you can do and everything else will fall in place. I, I truly believe that. I think that question needs to kind of be the other way around. Like how does the hip hop scene be in more support of Baltimore? And I, and, and, and I say that because nobody owes us nothing. Like the fans don't, People don't owe us to listen to our music. They don't, you know, they don't owe us to support us. Nobody is, nobody has to support us here. Like 92Q doesn't have to support us. You know, nobody has to support you. I think that the support comes twofold. So as an artist, you kind of got to know how to be a, a, a you kind of be a servant of others. They, you, know, you know, how can, what can you bring to the table that can help somebody else? Or, you know, if it's about Baltimore, it's about a city. What about the city do you see yourself uh, being a part of, how do you think you can change it? You know, how do you think you can bring change? You know, uh, if, if it's about gaining fans and things like that, what, you know, what do people like? You know, what can you give them that they like already? Like, how can you serve the city? You know, I think it starts there. A lot of times we go the other way around and expect for something to happen and people support us or buy records or whatever. When you haven't really put in your, your time of servitude, to the city that exists here. And I think it kind of starts there. And a lot of hometown success kind of 
kind of evolves from somebody being of a service to the to the space that they exist in. And we can mention many examples to that um, of, of artists and rappers who who became uh, a success because of the support that they gave their city. You know, so I, I would start there and kind of. The famous question, how does Baltimore hip hop become more mainstream? Ah, okay. I feel so many ways about that question. All right, so there's the goal to become mainstream. It's not Baltimore hip hop that's going to become mainstream before a person becomes mainstream. And sometimes within cities who haven't made it yet, the smaller cities of the, of the, of the country that haven't really burst the mainstream space yet, a lot of it is just connected to some level of consistency and unity. Um, that word gets thrown around a lot, I know, but I think it starts with self strength. You know, you know, look, we could all come together, but if everybody got a penny, you know, what is that going to do, right? We have to become strong within ourselves and really, uh, you know, do that first. I think we need to definitely raise each other up, but before the city gets on, a person has to get on. So let's talk about that first. And I, and, and you know, and that's really about goes back to what I was saying about consistency. Um, you know, being, being able to, to see how, how your craft can also be part of the mainstream. Where does it fit in? You know, do you want to be on the radio? Does, does, does your sonics fit what's on the radio? Does your formula fit what's on the radio? Does your tempo, does the key of your song, um, you know, mainstream has everything to do with, 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 uh, all kinds of machines and systems worth millions and millions of dollars. There's nobody that's mainstream who doesn't have an amazing budget. You know, it's, 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 you don't really become mainstream, um, independent, truly independent. You have to have partnerships and things like that. So that's a broad question, but I definitely feel like in order for the city to be more recognized on a mainstream level, I think we need to start spending money. I think we have to start putting my, my money where our mouths are, you know, start, you know, getting the right features, being in the right places, getting out the city, moving, hopping on those planes, you know, uh, really doing the work outside of the city. I think that's the thing that, that it takes. Most of the guys I know and, and pe artists I know that, that, that reach any kind of level of success outside of the city is because they spend a lot of time outside of the city. Well, hip hop is a is a, is a um is a large spectrum. Like if you think about all the colors, you know, yeah, in the spectrum there's a green, there's a blue, there's there's millions of spectrums, right? Like so, yes, there is a part of hip hop that is violent because it reflects the livelihood of those who are who are saying those words. Like you know, unless you're just phony, but far as the real ones. You know, this is it's violence in hip hop has always been violence in music. I mean, whatever who cares about hip hop, violence in music has always been a thing in blues and country and rock. You name it, it's violence. It's, it's, it, it, it happens um, in reference to, you know, um, you know, it being too negative or, or too violent. Yeah, I mean, it, it has it, it's moments now where things get a little I'm listening to the lyrics and, and, and on some of these um, videos watching the lyrics, I guess, on the caption on the screen, and I'm like, wow, they really, they're awesome, they're saying some wild things. But do I think it's harmful? I think it can be if you don't have the proper guidance at home, definitely. You know, I think, if you know, if you listen listening for these records to, to guide you in your life, which, you know, some people, they do, because they don't have it anywhere else, you know? Or they not feel like they can rely on what's around them, so they rely on the record to help guide them, or that artist, you know, it happens. But I mean, do I have a problem with it? I can't say I have a problem with, with, with it. I think that it's somebody's truth. I, how can I have a problem with somebody's truth? You know, if, if it's negative, it's because what's, what they, uh, what's, what's inspiring them is negative, right? So like, you know, it's all spectrums of hip hop. We need green, we need blue. The issue is not that the fact that it's negative hip hop, the issue is that there's not a, a, a widespread, there's no options. We don't have several options that exist on radio in the mainstream space is getting there, but how long can we just keep saying J. Cole and Kendrick as, a, as, a, as the other alternative option, right? Like, what else is there on a mainstream space that can give us that substance? And that's this is this the imbalance that happened in the last 15 years. We've totally got 
he went far left on the mainstream and just you know only the other the other kind of hip hop you know so yeah I think that um it's not going anywhere it's part of life you know I would say collaboration collaboration right like production you know I feel like that we both need to be open I think the younger the younger demographic is more open to participating in older sounds versus the older demographic participating in younger sounds. And sometimes, to be honest with you, it's not even cool when the OG is on the trap beat. It's just weird, right? Like, um, but, but to collaborate, I think it starts with collaboration that comes with education. I think that it, it, it starts with just exchanging information. Uh, so let's start there and let's, let's open up, let's open up multiple mediums and spaces where you have older generation that can teach the younger generation something and vice versa. I think it starts with education because, you know, if you're a producer and, and you're using FL Studio and, um, and then there's another producer that's using, let's just say, Pro Tools to make beats. I mean, the FL guy may be younger, but he can teach the Pro Tools guy something. The Pro Tools guy can teach the FL guy something, you know, for my producer heads out there that know what any of that means, you know.